Hello and welcome back to all of my viewers who have been taking the time to view my videos, leaving comments, giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. I'd like to welcome you back to my channel and for all of my new viewers, I have some information today that I think is very important. Um, we're going to be talking about male reproductive uh, system and how men are losing sperm count. Uh, there's a big problem with infertility. There's also feminization of men and there's issues with desire, arousal, erection, ejaculation, and I'm going to try to cover all that today. Um, I'm also going to get into maybe some gender issues, but that might be for another video. Uh, all the articles I am citing I will put below in the comment section so you could take a look at them as well. Some of them are quite interesting and I really urge people to do their own research. If this topic in interests you, please take the time to do your own research and um, leave it in the comment section as well. So I'm going to go through some of this. Some of it uh, might be a little bit confusing, some of it may not, so just try to bear with me on it. So the first uh, article that I'm going to go into is from Time Magazine, and this was published on July 25th, 2017, and this is Men's Sperm Counts Are Down Worldwide. So if you haven't heard of this study, it's uh, pretty well documented, and they've been talking about it for a while. So this particular uh, article says, a new report reveals that sperm counts among men in Western countries, including men in North America, Australia, New Zealand, and Europe, have dropped substantially over the years. According to study authors, in less than 40 years, collective sperm counts among the group of men has declined more than 50%. Sperm count is currently considered the best measure of male fertility. The new study published Tuesday in the journal Human Reproductive Update not only shows that men's sperm count are dropping, but that the continued decline does not appear to be leveling off. Now, I'm going to read you a couple more articles, and then I'm going to give you my opinion as to why, which is also cited. Uh, this is an article from Reuters. This is dated July 26, 2017. This one states, studies have reported declines in sperm counts since the early 1990s. So as you can see, there are some articles you can find on this. Um, one more is, let's see, this one um, is from um, December 27 to 18. European Science Foundation issued an ominous report warning that at least one in five men age 18 to 25 is subfertile. I guess they have now have a name for this and the ages seem to be dropping and I will explain that to you as well. The group of scientists asserted that sperm counts and sperm quality has been dropping consistently in the developed world for the last 50 years. Groups like the Center for Reproductive Epidemiology at the University of Rochester Medical Center are adding weight to the idea that sperm is taking a hit, possibly from environmental chemicals. Ah, now we're getting to this idea here. Okay, so what we're saying is that um, a lot of this is happening because of the environment, what we eat, what we put on our skin. Basically, they're talking about estrogen, and that is a problem we're having. There's been many articles that will relate problems with estrogen, as far as women getting too much estrogen and the effects that it has on them, but there haven't been as many studies and articles out on what the effects of getting too much estrogen are for men. So um, let's talk about this right here, environmental estrogens. A landmark study published in 1992 in the British Medical Journal that reviewed research on human semen quality over the past 50 years concluded that human sperm counts and semen volume has dropped significantly worldwide. It also suggests 
that exposure to environmental estrogens is responsible for this. And this was published in 1992. So now think of where we are today, and I don't think it's gotten much better. In fact, considering the article that I just read that it's now affecting men ages 18 to 25, we can see that it is getting worse. A little more alarming is um, the next thing that is happening. Okay. So let's talk about male estrogen, because this is very important. Male estrogen, the testes of men make a small amount of estrogen. Estrogen is prevented in that fluid that accompanies sperm through the male reproductive tract. Estrogen helps parts of the male tract absorb some of this fluid, which makes sperm more concentrated in semen and probably boosts sperm count in the ejaculate. The small amount of estrogen normally made in men is likely important for normal fertility. Okay, so as we know, women produce large amounts of estrogen, progesterone, and a little bit of testosterone. So that's not the same in men. Men produce more testosterone, but they do need to produce a little bit of estrogen um, in order for there to be this concentration of fluid. But stick with me on this. If there's too much estrogen, it can actually have a negative effect, okay? So now we're gonna talk about the male fetus. So think about this. If the mother is consuming too much estrogen um, and the fetus is somehow getting too much estrogen, the male fetus I'm talking about, um, it can have a negative effect on their reproductive development and fertility as an adult. Okay, exposure to excess estrogen during fetal development causes a syndrome called testicular descent and low sperm count. It may also cause an increase in the rate of testicular cancer. So basically what they're saying is if you look back to the young men, age 18 to 25, that are now having problems with infertility, that's not just the problem that I'm seeing that these young men are having. They're also having prob problems with desire. They're having problems with getting an erection, maintaining an erection. Um, they're having um, some issues with confusion with gender. Um, there's a feminization. Some of them are experiencing um, breasts, um, heavier breast tissue, and this is all due to higher levels of estrogen. So let's talk about some of the symptoms of high estrogen in men. They include infertility, gynecomastia, that's what I was talking about, the extra tissue with the breast, erectile dysfunction, which um, if there's high levels of estrogen, estrogen, they can have difficulty maintaining an erection. Okay, so there's um, something that we each have, or that men have, I'm talking about the now, that can inhibit uh, the estrogen from flooding the body. Um, so there's also medications now out that can help with stopping so much estrogen flow. Um, and it's called aromatase inhibitor. But a lot of these are used for women. They're not used for men. So that's something to think about there. Um, what's happening with men to try to combat um, this estrogen is usually they're given testosterone. So that's some of the treatment that men are getting. But this may also have a reverse effect. So men have to be careful of testosterone therapy. So testosterone therapy can make too much estrogen. Once a man has too much estrogen in his system, the brain and the testes may begin to produce less test testosterone. This can lead to even higher levels of estrogen and more severe estrogen dominance, magnifying the high estrogen symptoms. So the key is hormonal balance. So if you feel like um, you have too much estrogen, if you go to get your hormone che hormones checked, 
it's not always best to just jump into getting testosterone. You really want to have a balance. And you also want to find a doctor that understands that maybe you need an aromatase inhibitor um, to go along with it. So I'm just giving you some information on this. Um, lastly, I want to talk about some of the foods to avoid, some of the reasons that men are um, getting too much estrogen in their diet, and the chemicals. And, and what's been happening, it's kind of insidious in a way, because if men were getting a huge amount of estrogen, um, it actually would be dramatic and it would show up right away. But what's happening is it's such a small amount that um, is going on for such a long period of time that we really don't see the problems till much later in life. And look, this has been going on for 50 years. Now we're seeing it in babies that are born. Um, we're seeing a lot of this gender confusion, which I don't think is just not a coincidence. I think that all of this kind of goes together. I'm gonna to talk more about that in another episode. Um, but it's not that we're just talking more about this and society is just saying, oh, you know, this is going on. I actually physically think that very incrementally men are becoming more feminized and that is due to the amount of estrogen. Uh, one of the big factors is soy. Uh, soy has a lot of estrogen in it and it's amazing how many soy products there are out there and how much the media is pushing soy. There is soy in everything. Um, let's see, it's in hydro... hydro I can't say this right, vegetable proteins. So your, your oils and stuff have soy in it. Um, it's in starch and vegetables. Um, they process soy and they will mimic like soy powder. Um, a lot of men that were um, trying to build their muscles in something and they were replacing it for a protein were using soy, which was really a bad idea. So if, if you have soy products I probably would get rid of them. Um, but what I would do is look on the label and see if there's soy in it. I mean, soy sauces and everything as well. So just be more aware of what you're consuming. Also, um, there's meat products, there's plastics, there's chemicals. Uh, let's see. Um, it can be in drinking water. Uh, there's something called altrazine and it's a toxic weed killer that turns male frogs into females that produce viable eggs. Used widely in most U.S. cornfields, common drinking water um, contaminant. Now I'm not gonna go too much into this because uh, that's not really why I wanted to bring this up. Obviously, there's a lot of people out there that have some great information on how to check to see if you have too much estrogen. Actually, you can go to your doctor and just take a simple blood test, and then you can kind of figure out uh, some things to avoid. I have attached a couple of articles. Um, one of them is really good. It really talks about foods to avoid, uh, eating more organic because it can be in your meats. Obviously, there's a lot in pesticides. Um, there was a huge problem in, I'm trying to remember the a spray that they put on carpets and furniture, fire retardant, that had a very bad neg uh, negative chemical effect. I know that they have reduced that, but they had that going on for a long time. Um, and that was a really bad carcinogenic. It caused cancer and other things too. But I'm gonna do a part two to this video. I wanted to bring you this information today because I think it's really important and I think it's important for people to do their own research, um, to be aware of what's going on, and hopefully this has answered some of your questions. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it with other people so the information gets out, leave your comment, and subscribe to my channel. As you know, I believe everyone deserves to have a healthy sex life, and so do you.